This portion of our tank build is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Crisp, clean, refreshing. Uh, I started out by taping out the bottom. The tape will be used to give me nice, straight silicone lines. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of more overlapping on the bottom. And here I'm dry fitting all the pieces together. And you see the square in there. I was really forcing to get it square. And it kept opening up one seam. And it turns out this one panel on the right was not square at the top. I mean, I cut it square off of one edge. But the top wasn't square. So that was throwing the whole thing off. So yeah, I forced it. And actually had the bottom, the back panel fall forward onto the tank and broke out this perfect little circle so I cursed a lot I took a break I uh, thought about just quitting it and I said you know what I'm just going to glue that piece back in and I'll doctor it up with a little silicone because it's on the back the back's going to be black anyway and I made a new panel for the other side and there we are dry fitting again everything looking good all the tapes in place I have the front panel off I think I may glue it up like this and then do the front panel last so I don't have to climb over the top of the tank now this is going to be an injection style uh, silicone job so I'm using these little game playing cards to give me the proper gap all the way around the tank and uh, I think I'll sleep on it and then tomorrow we'll inject the silicone so uh, you won't have to wait until tomorrow <laughs> just a few seconds okay guys well it's tomorrow I thought I'd go over a few of the products I was gonna need uh, first of all paper towels lots of them uh, I didn't use as many as I thought but then I'll show you the, uh, this is the silicone I was using, this ASI aquarium sealant. It's a black silicone. It's about $10 a tube. Um, got it on Amazon. It's pretty neat as it has this um, removable applicators. Whereas the GE silicone comes with it stuck to the tube and you need to get something long to go down and break the foil out. These are not like that. Uh, many many rubber gloves or disposable gloves were used so have a few of those on hand uh, I may have used 10 gloves uh, there's all the tape and it's real handy to have some kind of razor especially towards the end when you want to pull the tape off some of it was under clamps and had to be cut see that I also taped on the outside where I was expecting squeeze out to come through so you inject the silicone from the inside and then whatever squeeze out came to the outside you could then smear it off and then pull the tape off and that would remove it as well so yeah um, I'd say it wasn't as easy as I thought it was gonna be and here I'm showing you the tube where you have to just cut the little end of the plastic off with a knife um, to expose this and then I had pinched shut the tip of the cap and what I didn't realize is that first little bit sitting in that, that nub right on the end was a little hardened and uh, I should have blew that out before I screwed the cap on because what ended up happening was it clogged the tip and then I just used a piece on the caulk gun to cut the tip off and I made it bigger ended up wasting a lot of silicone and not getting the precision that I wanted to get like here I thought I was pushing it good enough to get it down between the two pieces of glass and it turned out that I wasn't so I was putting more of an overlap seam on the bottom whereas that's more like a Aquion tank where the silicone isn't just between the two pieces of glass it laps over each piece a little bit so that was my plan on the bottom thinking substrate and the uh, 
design of the stand will cover that and give me a little more peace of mind. But I wasn't getting the injection that I thought I could get, or penetration if I can. I figured I could go back and push it through with my finger, but not so much the case. And here's the only real camera angle I got of the actual injection process. And it seemed to work better on the sides. And it worked better with that first type of nozzle that I made where I pinched it with the pliers. Made like that oval shape. And this was not that. This was the, the cut wider open tip. And you can see how it does fill in the glass and make a nice bead. But it just wasn't getting below that second piece of glass as much as I would have liked it to. And running your finger through it didn't really push it through. Here you see I was getting the hang of it on the front. Where it was definitely getting down between the glass a lot better. So, thank God for the tape. It would have been such a nightmare. Whoever thought of that putting the tape on idea is a genius. Uh, I think the first time I saw it was King of DIY. It may have been the first guy who told me about the tape. But I use the tape in my sumps and everything. It just really makes it look better. It's, you know, otherwise it's impossible. But... Now, I also didn't realize that this stuff skins within uh, 10 minutes. So that whole thinking I could go back and smooth things out, well, that didn't work out the way I would have liked it to. Things to remember on my next tank would be to do one, one seam, one straight line, and then smooth it out, and then move on to the next. Because uh, you have to keep the silicone going because you can't let one piece dry or skin too much before you put another one attaching to it because wet silicone doesn't stick very well to itself once it's dried so you know there is a whole timing thing involved you can't just stop halfway through and take a break and then the tapes off and the tanks beautiful from this distance <laughs> As you get closer, uh, let's just say if it was in a showroom, I would pass on the tank and to, due to the silicone job. I am not Red Sea or Deep Blue yet. <laughs> but I do like the way it came out with the black silicone. It didn't seem to get as much squeeze out through the glass as I would have liked to in some spots. And that worked out to my benefit because of not getting over there to smooth it out in time. If I had had it all globbed out the side, it really would have looked horrible. And those two by fours clamped to the stand, just one, in the, one on each side, that was so helpful with setting it up. If I could have made them longer and clamped the top of the glass to them, that may have even been a cool thing too. But the worst part about this job is sticking your head in this tank trying to work and the air quality is horrible. The smell of the silicone is, if you've ever worked with silicone, you know it's got that ammonia smell. Well, it gets so concentrated in the tank because it must be heavier than air because you could stick your head outside the tank and it wasn't that bad, but when your head was in that tank, boy, it was just like holding the odor. So... Yeah, there was um, a little more waste than I wanted to, but I got through it, believe it or not. Um, only about a tube and a third were used on this build, and I probably could have done it in one tube if I wasn't as wasteful. But I'll be building more tanks, so it's okay that I have more black silicone. Yes, at least some nano tanks. Now, anybody who was on the live stream last night or saw my Instagram post will know that I dropped the back piece and knocked a divot out of it. Well, I wasn't going to let that stop me. I super glued it back in. And once that dries, I'll smear it with some black silicone and the back of the tank will be painted black. So I think it'll go unnoticed and I don't 
feel that there's that much pressure up at that side of the tank. So thanks for watching. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment area. And uh, in seven days, it will be dry.